Uh, you're gonna find that they use a uh, kind of skinny uh, rice noodle, still fresh rice noodle, but skinny. It looks similar to pad thai, okay? And the end result is a, a lighter color as well. So I've done the same thing here. I've heated up the pan, I've put in some oil, and it's just smoking hot now. And one thing you want to do with these stir fries, uh, apply to both cases if you're trying at home. Don't try and do a huge batch at one go, okay? You want to cook them in small batches, and the reason for that is because you want to generate the kind of heat level that will, you know, enable you to cook this properly. If you cook a big batch, uh, and to be honest, not all Asians know this as well. My mom used to cook this before I learned to cook uh, Malaysian food, and she used to cook for a family of 10, and they'll be like kind of soggy and sticky and, you know, sort of thing. Okay, so I've done the same thing here. I'm um, just uh, heating up the noodles, and I'm just going to throw in some minced garlic. You're going to find that a lot of Asian stir fries, uh, minced garlic feature quite prominently. So you want to stock up your pan to, you know, garlic, onion, uh, shallots, you know, ginger. Those are kind of like common ingredients. Uh -huh. one. Yeah. Okay. So we're just frying this up a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more oil. Well, why is really interesting that you add your garlic after the noodles? Yeah, that's because I mean I'm used to using a high pressure burner. If I throw in the garlic, when the oil is hot, it's going to just burn up quickly. Yes. Yeah. So I try and sizzle the noodles. If I were using a high pressure burner, the noodles would be scorched and it would be a little bit soft by now. But we don't have all day here, um, so we're going to do the best we can to this induction cooker. So yeah, like I said, you know, check out my website, jackiem.com.au, j-a-c-k-i-e-m.com.au. If you want to check out Billy Law's uh, culinary tour, uh, you want to find out more about my restaurant, I'm only open 15 hours a week, so I'm very exclusive. I love that. Um, <laughs> How many seats? Four? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not far off, yeah. And, um, okay, here we go. So we've sizzled the noodles a little bit, and I'm going to add in um, some chicken. Why not? Yeah, that's my secret sauce. I'm going to throw in some uh, pre-cooked chicken slices just to speed things up a little bit. In Malaysia, you, would, you wouldn't find chicken in your regular uh, down the street uh, halfway down store. But again, the improvise over here in Malaysia, they usually use blood cockles. They'll throw in some, uh, some, some, some uh, Chinese sausage. Well, I don't use pork in my cooking. Some of the Chinese vendors might still use pork lard and pork crisp um, to top it up with. Like I said, I don't use pork, I use vegetable oil, got palm oil, palm food oil. Okay, um, so here we go. And in Chennai, actually, uh, one of the more famous places actually use shredded crab meat on top, fresh crab meat. Very wow, nice. that's yeah. Nice yeah. Okay, so I've thrown in the chicken. I'm going to throw in some sauce now, and this sauce, uh, lots of different recipes for CKT sauce out there. Usually that consists of things like soy sauce, or maybe fish sauce, if it's from Penang and that sort of stuff. Mine has a little bit of both, and it has some thick soy as well. A bit of sugar, a bit of chicken seasoning again. Sugar is very important for seasoning in Malaysian Yeah, that's right. The Malaysian dishes aren't quite as sweet as um, Thai dishes, but there is like a, a slight undertone of sweetness, and it's just to balance out the flavor, I think. Okay. Even when you do, you know, stir fried vegetables, the mum always taught me to add a pinch of, pinch of sugar at the end. Yeah, you'd be amazed at what kind of a difference it makes to your dish. So, yeah, just try it. Like I said, just go overboard and put like, you know, tablespoonfuls into your, you know, noodles. But a little bit of it really enhances the flavor. Okay, again with this, I've added it in tiny amounts. And especially, you know, if you're using a wok or a stove that's not quite, you know, that doesn't quite generate the kind of heat you would get in a, 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 a hawker stall, you know, that's quite important. That way you're keeping it quite dry. That's a really good tip. Okay. So there you have it. I'm going to. What has it done about me already? Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay, like this bird is out, even if you're making it at home, you don't need to do a single bird at a time with you. Yeah. But yeah. that's maybe two. Yeah, maybe two. that's right, maybe two. Yeah. But this I probably wouldn't do two because it's, I mean, I mean, <laughs> the organizers keep trying to convince me, oh, industrial stove tops get really hot, you'll be right, you'll be right. But yeah, whatever. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> I'm going to crack the egg again. Is this folding again? Yeah, it's folding again. A lot of people, they make a mistake of like just not like scrambling too quickly. And when you, if, you, if you happen to invest in a high pressure burner, you can pick one up uh, over in Caramada. They'll cost
cost you about 200 bucks, give or take. How many, how many rings per ring? Three. Oh, there are only two rings, but they generate a lot of heat, right? Um, and you've got to use it outside, like for barbecue, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a great investment, so it's the best 200 dollars you'll ever spend, okay? And you'll be able to do this every day, you have property deal every day. Okay, so you've got that. I'm just going to turn off the heat and then I'll toss in the bean sprouts and some garlic fries. Okay? So these are Chinese um, Asian garlic chai. They're quite different from normal chai. They're quite like this. And they're really hungry, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You have them in the glass, like, ooh. They're beautiful. Well, there you have it. That's all there is to it. And usually I'll just sprinkle some lark and make fried shallots over the top just to finish it off. And I would serve, I know in Malaysia, you would usually um, add chili, chili paste while you're cooking. But obviously, because in Australia, not everyone likes their chili. I serve the chili separately, and I actually serve it with a shrimp paste chili, which is a little bit not quite traditionally how you would find it. But you know, people love their shrimp paste. So there you go. That's the Migo Rank and Chakwe Gyal. Any questions? Anyone? Uh, no, nothing. No questions? Yes? Yeah? Oh, thank you. You don't know how it goes. <laughs> That looks amazing, Jackie. Okay. Mm. There you go. So two Malaysian noodle dishes. Thank yep. you. As you can see, they're both, you know, you can whip them up very, very quickly at home on your own, as long as you've got all the ingredients all lined up. Now, me goreng, you can either find it vegetarian in Malaysia, or I actually, at my restaurant, I serve it with seafood. There is just a plain, you know, vegetarian. I wouldn't say vegetarian because it's also chicken seasoning. I'm very, very pedantic, by the way. If anyone goes to my restaurant and asks vegetarian dishes, Make sure you are really vegetarian because I'll tell you you've got two dishes to choose from. Okay? Because a lot of people say, oh, chocolate dough, I want a vegetarian chocolate dough. I'll say, I don't do a vegetarian. And they'll say, oh, what's in it? And I'll say, oh, well, chicken season. Oh, that's not right. Oh, they'll say, oh, I'll do vegan and we want roti. And I say, well, uh, 